great to be here. Uh, and uh, again, I'm Paul Lippman, Chief Revenue Officer at Inflection, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak with you about how quantum will enable the US and our allies to retain and extend our strategic advantage for the decade ahead. We live in an era of increasingly complex and escalating national security threats. GPS is increasingly jammed and denied and attacked. In fact, the latest stat is that these attacks are up over 500% year on year. But it's not just GPS. The entire electromagnetic spectrum is under attack in conflict zones. Our adversaries are fielding ever more sophisticated techniques to blind and disrupt our warfighters. There was actually a very interesting paper out of China a week or two ago where a group of scientists had modeled uh, a system that could totally disrupt Starlink above Taiwan. We've seen drones uh, increasingly used for devastating effect in the Ukraine conflict, and the rise of AI-enabled drone swarms will fundamentally change the nature of conflict forever. And lastly, the space, which we used to describe as our final frontier, is now essentially the next frontier in conflict. And the reality is that the classical technologies we've relied on for the last several decades are no longer capable of keeping up with this pace of change and with this complexity. So it will be the nations that lead in quantum that ultimately will have strategic advantage in the years to come. In fact, so much so that the Under Secretary of War for Research and Engineering, Emil Michael, recently, this is a few weeks ago, announced six critical technologies for the department. And one of these he described as quantum and battlefield information dominance, or QBID for short. And he described this as a set of technologies for enabling our warfighters to operate in these congested and contested environments, to be able to communicate, to have ensured positioning, navigation, and timing, or PNT for short, and the ability to operate and communicate in the electromagnetic spectrum. What we're fundamentally talking about here, in reality, is the control of and visibility into the information plane. In PNT, the ability to know where you are, where you're moving, your velocity, your direction, Assured timing, which is critical for PNT, it's the T in PNT after all, but also critical for the operation of communication technologies, radar systems, and computing systems. The ability to communicate in the electromagnetic spectrum, the ability to have visibility into and control over adversaries' communication, and the ability to detect and protect against the emerging threats of drones and the ballistic and hypersonic missiles that are the impetus behind the Golden Dome architecture. And then lastly, all of these sensors, all of these systems I'm talking about throwing off vast amounts of data, so we will need sophisticated edge-deployed AI systems to perform anomaly detection, pattern recognition, and provide decision support in the field in real time. At Inflection, we are developing a full spectrum of solutions to the qubit challenge. We build world-class, mission-ready quantum sensing systems, quantum computing systems, AI systems. We've demonstrated a number of world firsts across the domains of land, sea, air, space, and cyber, which I'll talk about today. And we are honored to serve some of the most demanding national security customers in the US, UK, and Australia. When we talk about positioning, uh, most of us think about uh, GPS as a location service. Take out your phone, open Google Maps, see where you are. But in reality, GPS is actually a timing service. And it is a timing service that's under increasing attack. There's a chart here very recently from Eastern Europe showing GPS outage. So much so that we can no longer rely on GPS for timing in much of the world certainly in conflict zones. So the implication here for PNT, for knowing where you are uh, on the face of the Earth, uh, the implication for communication systems that rely on timing signals to operate, certainly for radar, for multi-static radar, 
which requires exquisitely sensitive timing signals to communicate nodes across broad distances. And there are a range of critical industries that fundamentally rely on accurate timing. In fact, it's been estimated that should GPS be denied entirely, it would cost the US economy over $1.6 billion on a daily basis. The part that inflection pays in helping to solve this problem is our optical atomic clock product, quantum clock, called Ticker. It is over 100 times more precise and accurate than GPS. We make it available in a rack-mounted, deployable, ruggedized form factor. It's been demonstrated uh, in a variety of harsh environments on land, on the sea, as I'll talk about, under the sea, in the air. And we're working with partners to space qualify this technology for deployment in orbit. And we announced yesterday in another session uh, at this conference recent work to demonstrate picosecond level timing, distribution, and synchronization across tens of kilometers of fiber network. So fundamentally, Ticker enables our customers to, to navigate, to operate, to sense in environments where GPS and GNSS are either not available or where they've been denied entirely. I mentioned under the sea, we were uh, honored very recently, this is a month or two ago, to partner with the UK's Royal Navy and MSUBs to incorporate the first ever external technology into the XV Excalibur, which is the Royal Navy's autonomous submarine. In fact, it was the first time that an optical atomic clock has been deployed on a submarine at sea. Uh, and so this technology is fundamentally important to the Navy's objective of long duration underwater missions because if you want to get a timing signal or you want to synchronize a clock, well, you have to surface the submarine or surface an antenna, which is certainly suboptimal in conflict scenarios. So this optical atomic clock, high precision, low bias, low drift timing is fundamentally important for long duration missions. Uh, inflection is also uh, very active in the P and N parts, positioning and navigation parts of PNT. Uh, we demonstrated the world's first ever creation of Bose-Einstein condensate in flight. Uh, Bose-Einstein condensate is a requirement for exquisitely sensitive navigational sensors, gravitational sensors. We demonstrated the first ever operation of an optical atomic clock in flight and proved the resilience of these systems to the rigors and the stresses of takeoff and flight and landing over multiple trials over a period of multiple months. And very recently, uh, again a month or two ago, we demonstrated for the first time the operation of a continuous beam cold atom inertial sensing system at sea. Uh, and atom interferometry is kind of a powerful approach to navigation because it's completely self-contained. It doesn't require uh, an external signal or a map, making it extremely hard, if not impossible, to spoof. Uh, it's a high bandwidth and high dynamic range system, and in combination with our clock, essentially provides uh, a completely self-contained dead reckoning navigation system. We'll be doing further sea trials of this technology with the Royal Navy in the new year. And of course, this has application not just for the Royal Navy, but for the US Navy, Australian Navy, uh, and beyond. Turning now to the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, what has been referred to as the invisible battle space. The chart here on the slide is from a recent NATO publication and shows the vast array of assets that are communicating through the electromagnetic spectrum that are trying to surveil the electromagnetic spectrum or disrupt the electromagnetic spectrum. And the challenge that classical antennas face in this environment is that they scale, the fundamental physics means they scale with the wavelength of the signal of interest. So for low frequency operations can require an antenna that is meters or even tens of meters uh, in size. These antennas are specific to the particular frequency range. And so it's not uncommon to see a military vehicle that is festooned with a forest of antennas to cover the spectrum of interest. They're susceptible to jamming. They can be overloaded by high power signals, and they inherently re-radiate. 
And so if something is radiating, if it's emitting a signal, it can be detected. And if it can be detected, it can be destroyed. So the net result for our warfighters is that it's increasingly hard for them to remain covert. It's hard for them to sense. It's hard for them to re retain situational awareness and ultimately hard for them to stay safe. Quantum offers a powerful solution to this problem. Quantum radio frequency sensing, also referred to as Rydberg sensing, uses atoms rather than antennas. And so these atoms can be excited into high Rydberg states where they're sensitive to RF radiation. And in a single sensor head, which is essentially the size of the clicker I'm holding in my hand, we can have a vapor of atoms that can be tuned across the entire electromagnetic spectrum from kilohertz on the low end to many gigahertz, even into the terahertz regime on the high end. Uh, and because we're talking about an all optical system, it's essentially atomic vapor being interrogated by lasers, these systems are electrically silent, meaning they don't re-radiate re and obviates the risk that is associated with classical antennas. And again, because these atoms can be so exquisitely tuned to the wavelength of interest, makes them inherently resistant to the typical jamming attacks. So the net result for our warfighters is truly secure and covert communications. And it also opens up a range of new concepts of operation in electronic warfare and communication. So for example, we can have an array of these sensors, as you see in our Skywire product here, that are tuned to the same frequency for very accurate signal detection finding at low intensity. Or we can tune different sensors to different wavelengths. So we can have sensors tuned to low frequency for beyond line of sight operation and other sensors that are tuned to high frequency for near field operation. It's truly a revolutionary approach to electromagnetic operations. So I mentioned operation on the land. We talked about on the sea. We talked about under the sea. We talked about in the air. Inflection is also very active in pioneering these technologies in space. We've been working with NASA for many years. Our ultra-cold matter system is at the heart of NASA's cold atom laboratory, which has been operating on the ISS for many years. We're proud to be partnering with NASA and JPL to build the quantum gravity gradiometer pathfinder system, which will put an exquisitely sensitive gravity sensor into orbit. We are partnered with the United States Space Force to space qualify Ticker, as I mentioned before, and we recently announced a partnership with Voyager, which is building a commercial successor to the ISS and will be deploying quantum sensing technology on their platform as well. As I mentioned before, all of these sensors, the, the Ticker, the RF system, the inertial system, are throwing off vast amounts of data, so Inflection is partnering with the United States Army, the United States Navy, and also with the European Space Agency to develop quantum-inspired, physics-inspired AI algorithms and systems for real-time anomaly detection, pattern recognition at the edge on small GPU systems. So this enables real-time uh, decision support and real-time response to threats based upon this vast amount of sensing data. Of course, it's not just the United States and our allies that are thinking about this problem. Um, this chart shows government investment in quantum globally, and China is investing at almost twice the level of the United States. Now, this is just showing government investment. If you include private capital and public market investment, maybe that the gap is not quite so large, but still it throws into stark relief the magnitude of the challenge for the US and our allies to retain leadership in quantum. So what role do we as an industry have to play here? We spend a lot of our time, a lot of our effort, a lot of our capital doing science, right? This is a deep tech industry after all. The reality, though, is that our customers in the national security field don't really care that the solutions we're providing are quantum. What they care about is the mission. They have a problem to solve. 
They need solutions to solve that problem. The fact that those solutions happen to be quantum is great, but that is not the primary motivation. And so while obviously uh, we need to continue to invest in doing the science and advancing the engineering, we need to open the aperture and start to think about a mission-focused view of our technology roadmaps and our product roadmaps. How do we deliver solutions to our national security customers that ultimately solve their problem, in addition to continuing to do the excellent work that we're doing today on the scientific front? As I mentioned at the beginning, the complexity and pace of the threat is only accelerating. And in fact, this is a primary motivation behind the recent pronouncement from the Pentagon that they're radically overhauling the way that they organize portfolios and radically overhauling the way that they procure advanced technology, essentially to reduce the time from determination of mission need to fielding of solution to the warfighter in the field. And we as an industry must rise also to meet this challenge. We have to innovate faster. We have to deliver faster in order to ensure strategic leadership for the US and our allies. We're at uh, an interesting inflection point, if you'll forgive the pun, in the development of our industry. Over the last few years, we've gone from taking technologies out of the lab into early productization. Uh, Ticker is a great example of this. It's a product in the true sense of the word. It has a spec, it has a warranty, it has a service agreement. But now, collectively, we have to move into the next phase. We have to develop the systems engineering capability, the engineering capability and capacity to go from making one of something, five of something, 10 of something, to building hundreds, thousands, and beyond. And this is especially the case in the, in the sensing arena. And this will take people, it will take capital, it will take capabilities, it will take infrastructure. But in addition, it will take building deep and resilient supply chains. If you look across the sensing industry and look across the quantum industry more generally, you find a lot of the quantum modalities rely on one or two kind of boutique providers that create uh, handcrafted technologies in very small quantities. And we need to support and we need investment to build supply chains that can meet the pace of the mission need, that can meet the volume of the mission need at quality and at scale. So these things are not just the job for one company, right? They're certainly not just the job for inflection. They're not even the job for a small number of companies. This is an industry-wide challenge, and it's an industry-wide opportunity to enable the US and our allies to retain and extend our strategic advantage, to retain and extend our national security for the decade ahead. So thank you for your time. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing at Inflection, if you'd like to get involved in what we're doing at Inflection, I welcome you to reach out. We'd be delighted to speak with you. So thank you very much for your time.